My name is Kathy Dykstra and I want you to welcome you to this sew along that we're doing. Um, I've got a new pattern that's recently come out and it is called the Vintage Apron Dress and it is size 3 month through uh, 4T. It's, I think, an adorable, perfect little summer dress. It can be made with pleats and embroidery um, on the front of it, or it can be left plain. It, it's basically a blank canvas. You can do lace shaping, you can do hand or machine embroidery, you know, whatever you like. Um, so this is the introduction video, and I'm gonna kind of go over some of the supplies that you'll need and show you some of the samples that I've made up. Uh, so this pretty little yellow dress, I love this one. This is a Imperial Batiste and it made up quite nicely. I use the square neck uh, the square neckline option for this dress. And I chose to pin stitch the lace around the neckline and armholes. We're going to cover several different ways to make pin tucks, and I just thought I would show you this one. So that's one of them. Uh, this one obviously is the plain front, and I have used the sweetheart neckline on this one. Uh, and again, I've pin stitched the lace on. This fabric is also sheer. It is a cotton lawn. Another dress that I made up as a sample, uh, again with a square neckline, and I believe this one also I used the reverse uh, pin tucks on. And this is a, a lightweight, a Batiste weight uh, dimity fabric that came out of my stash. Uh, you can see the various hem treatments I've used as well. This one has just a uh, flat lace that I've pin stitched on along with the gathered lace around the necklines. So that's another option. Um, this dress, oh I still have blue marks on there. I need to get those out. Uh, this is another cotton lawn fabric, uh, pin stitched lace and on um, this one, mm, I also did the reverse threaded pin tucks. I think they make, um, they're just a nice option. Um, on this one, what did I do? Yep, did those reverse pin tucks on that also. And you can have as many or as few pin tucks as you wish. This one has the rounded neckline, and I've pin stitched the lace, and you can see at the hem here, I've got um, the double lace with the ruffle. So that's really sweet. This is another one that I've done, and because it's a larger size, I wanted to try uh, fabric that wasn't see-through. So I have a very lightweight line piquet fabric. Uh, and that way you can wear it in the summer. You don't have to worry about seeing through, um, but it's still nice and cool. And I used a quarter inch Swiss trim on this one. And then for the hem, I have a beautiful uh, Swiss trim that I put around the hem of this. So, and, and I did add um, some cute little pockets here, which I'll give instructions for that also. I hadn't planned to, but they just were so cute, I feel like I have to share. So that's another option. You can also use uh, gingham. Uh, in, any lightweight fabric will work. Handkerchief linen or Swiss batiste would be beautiful. So you'll need your pattern, which I will put the link to my pattern in the Etsy shop. And then basic sewing supplies. You're going to need a ruler, obviously your fabric. Um, if you're going to use lace, you can use the either the val lace if you're going to gather or you want a dressier look, or you can use the uh, Swiss trims if if you want um, a little. I think that makes it a little more tailored looking, and it's certainly easy to care for. There's no ironing required. 
You're going to need a blue washout marker, and there's several different brands that there's Marks Be Gone, um, Clover makes one, Soline makes one, any of these water soluble uh, pens will work. So you're going to want one of those. If you're using one of the Val laces, I like to use an awl or a similar tool to um, help guide the lace as it goes under the foot of the machine. And you will need your regular sewing foot and then depending on what techniques you're going to use, you may need um, or find helpful. These are optional, but they're very helpful. For gathering the lace and doing a pin stitching, I like to use an open-toed foot. Um, then if you're going to do uh, some of the pin tucks you can do with your uh, twin needle pin tucks. And for that, you're going to need your twin needle and a five groove pin tuck. And those supplies are listed on the pattern as well. And for some of the other pin tuck methods, the reverse pin tuck or just a regular stitched in pin tuck, I find having an edge, sti edge stitching foot or a lace joining foot to be very helpful. So they are optional, but um, they will really make your job easier. You're gonna need your regular sewing needle and that can be either a 65 if you're using really lightweight fabrics or a 70 and universal or microtex work. So depending on what you might have in your stash, either one of those work. Uh, if you have to go out and buy one, I would recommend the Microtex that is ideal for woven fabrics. And then if you're going to do a pin stitch, uh, the size 110 needle, either the universal or a jeans needle is a great size. It creates a beautiful hole uh, for the lace to go into. You can see, hopefully. It just creates a nice open hole and you don't have to worry about it uh, cutting the lace like you would if you used a wing needle. And then your threads. For your basic sewing, you're gonna need a 60 weight thread. Um, I like to use the Mettler Metrosine thread, but Aurafil also makes a great 60 weight thread. Um, or you can construct with your 50 weight DMC cotton thread, you know, depending on the fabric. And that comes in, well, all of these come in a variety of colors for constructing the dress. Then if you're going to do any pin stitching, uh, I highly recommend the uh, Madeira Katona. It is an 80 weight thread. And that I find to be best for pin stitching because the smaller weight of the thread uh, creates a, it doesn't fill up the holes. Additionally, if you choose to do any hand embroidery like I've done on this one, uh, I have included the embroidery design in with the pattern. Uh, if you're doing that, you would need to have uh, either floss or floche and your hand sewing needles, you know, whatever your preference is. So I hope you're looking forward to this sew along and we will start in a couple days with the uh, cutting out and getting started with it. And in the meantime, I will have a list of all these various supplies down below in the comments in case there's anything that you might need to get. If you've enjoyed this and plan to follow along with this video, please hit the subscribe button and that way you will get notified when the next video comes up.